Hey, it's Donna Rudowitz, and I am here today. We're going to talk about identity and who your identity, is, your identity is and the importance of holding a strong identity. So when I say, what is my identity? And when you ask yourself that question is, who am I showing up to be in the world? There's two lenses that I want you to look from. I want you to look from the emotional lens, which is who do you feel you're showing up as? And then two, I want you to look at the universal feedback that's around you and looking at what has manifested around you. And this is the opportunity to ask yourself the question, who is the next level of me? Right? So when we look at how we feel and we look at the universal feedback of what we've created around us, they may be the same or they may be different. And I want to preface, this is not right or wrong, bad or good. This just is. And it's your opportunity as the observer of your life to say, where is how I feel and what is presented in front of me? Where is there a gap if there is one? And if there is a gap, what's keeping me from living the life that I know I'm meant to live? And that's why it's important to ask yourself the question, who is this next level of me. And then take the time to actually really think about it and write it down. I don't know if you've been through these exercises before like me, but I could think of something in my head and I could have thoughts about it. But when I take a step back and I actually write it down and I allow myself to have a conversation with it and I see it written on paper, I'm telling you, it's like night and day. It's very, very different. Because if you don't know who you are, where you want to go, and what you want to be feeling and achieving, then you could say, I want to move up to the next level of my life. But the problem is, is that life is going to take you somewhere, and it likely will be a place that you haven't created. So you need to be able to get in there and take responsibility for your life. And responsibility doesn't mean it's a burden, it actually means it's an honor, but you get to take responsibility for your life and decide who you are and where you wanna go, what you wanna be experiencing, the type of people that you wanna be sharing life with. We wanna be in the driver's seat of this. You've got to decide who this identity is. And until you decide, the universe is going to consistently realign your life to meet the needs of energy around you. So once you make a decision, right, I think there's a saying that says providence moves once we make a decision. So once we make a decision and we get to choose to claim who is this next level of me and what is the identity of this person, once we choose to claim, we claim it right now. And you claim who you're here to be. You've been through great emotional struggle. You've been through great pain. You've been through challenges. I'm sure you've experienced triumphs in your life. But you wouldn't be here as a divorcing gracefully and beyond sister if you didn't believe that there's a next level of life for you. There's a next chapter for you. And you're going to be given challenges along the way. Right? Those challenges are going to come in whether you want them to or not. But the challenges aren't actually a stumbling block, believe it or not. The challenges are actually leverage. Is that you get to a challenge is showing you that you're still on the new path, that you have a gift. And a challenge is the gift to help you move through ch those challenges rapidly. So you're either going to have a viewpoint that the universe is friendly or the universe is unfriendly. So you may have the viewpoint that life works out for me, or you may have the viewpoint that life works against me. So again, going back to the original sort of, sort of conversation is what is my identity? How am I showing up in the world today? And I, when you identify who this next level that your 
emanating into is how would she behave? How would she show up in the world? How would she handle challenges? Right, so let's, I'm gonna use a very, very clear example because I think we could all understand this. Eli Musk, right, who's, who's, who's a very, very wealthy man now, um, he's been traveling to Mars, right, on, a, on the personal dime. This is not subsidized by anybody else. He's, and he owns Tesla, created cars. He created his salary, believe it or not, to be very, he's taking a very low salary from Tesla, but I believe it was written, I read in the news that um, he had profit incentives if the company did well, that he would be receiving profit incentives as a result of that. And I believe he received over a $2 billion bonus, right? Billion dollars. So if we sit back and say, okay, so now Elon Musk has, has conditioned himself to handle million dollar challenges and billion dollar challenges. That's the identity of how he shows up. He shows up as he's, he's that person who can handle those challenges. Now, this is not bad or good, wrong or right, but for you or for me, we're not conditioned to handle those challenges just yet. We may show up and be able to handle a $10,000 challenge, a $50,000 challenge, maybe even a $100,000 challenge, but we are not conditioned with the ability to handle a billion dollar challenge. Does it mean we can't handle it? Absolutely not. What it means is in the moment, we may not have the tools and the ability to handle it because we're not yet fully seated in that identity to be able to handle it. So I want you to be able to look at your life and look at the opportunity that surrounds you in all areas, in relationships, in work, in life, in love, and not look at something as not available to you but is to ask yourself rather, do I have the identity to meet the needs of the challenges of this person? Because you could say, I wanna be in a, I am in a committed relationship. I am with a man who absolutely adores me and loves me, who comes from a great family, is honorable, is trustworthy. You could say that, but if your identity doesn't meet the ability to receive that, you're gonna blow it up left and right, and you're going to ruin every relationship you're in because your identity isn't yet ready to receive it. Can you receive it? Can you learn how to receive it? Absolutely. But let's say you've been through a history of being treated very, very poorly by men. Let's say your father was a narcissist, maybe even alcoholism. Let's say you were mentally abused or emotionally abused. Let's say that every man that you've been with may have been good in some ways, but other ways really challenging. Uh, you really don't know what it's like to be in a relationship with, with a man that has those qualities. Well, that's why when you blow up the relationships, it's not your fault. It's just because your identity isn't met to meet where you want to be. So this is your opportunity to say, okay, I'm ready to step up the level because stepping up into new identities is like a ladder. It's very hard to go from the first step of the ladder and just scale all those steps and end up at the top. We have to take one step at a time. So by increasing your identity of how you're showing up in the world and by increasing it slowly and one step at a time, you're going to eventually be able to handle those billion dollar issues and, and be able to receive those wonderful relationships because your identity now meets the challenge. So when you're challenged, it's your opportunity to step up into this new identity. So for most of us who are looking to engage in wonderful, healthy, committed relationships, if you're getting in relationships with people who are frustrating you or you're, you're not there, the challenge is actually there to help you build to the next level so you can receive the next level of relationship that you wanna be in. And you have to decide to cut off all other options of this identity that you're standing in. You can't be one, one day say, okay, I'm gonna be Donna and I'm gonna show up in this identity. And the next day I'm gonna be Donna and I'm gonna show up in this identity. And one of them be strong and empowered and the other one be the victim. You can't be wobbling. You've got to decide and cut off all other options that you are worthy, that this identity that you have decided to step into is yours. You may not have the tools, you may not know exactly how you're going to get there, but you are stepping into it saying that it is mine and I'm receiving this identity.
and that the universe is a friendly place for me, that the challenges aren't there to take me down. They're there to actually lift me up. They're an opportunity. It's changing the internal narrative, the conversation that you're having. Instead of the challenges happening to you, you're giving purpose to these challenges. You understand that you're reaching upper limit discussions, right? And it's asking yourself how the upper limit meeting, how I want more fun in my life. I would like more wealth in my life. I would like more of X, Y, and Z in my life. And what's the upper limit that I'm able to receive right now and in the identity who I am grooming myself to be is what's the upper limit conversation there. Your internal narrative and the dialogue that you have with yourself on a daily basis is perhaps one of the most important things that you could be having. It is the most important conversation for success. As a matter of fact, the, the ability that we're, we're allowed to persuade ourselves is going to be the ability that we're allowed going to allow ourselves to have the success. And sometimes we have to get in there with a vacuum and we have to vacuum our psychology to see where the dirt is. Grooming your psychology is a real thing. Just when you take a vacuum to a rug and you can see where you vacuumed in the lines and when you take that canister out and you can see the dirt that has accumulated in the vacuum and you could throw it away, it's the same thing with our psychology. Challenges give us the opportunity to vacuum our psychology so we could identify the dirt, we could see the dirt, and then we could get rid of the dirt. Because for every challenge, we're closer to this new identity that we have chosen to step into, that we're not going to be just haphazardly going wherever the wind goes and looking at external reference points for our growth and our transformation is that for the first time, perhaps in our lives, we're looking at internal reference points that we are anchoring to this new identity. And we have to understand that when we anchor to a new, a new identity, there's coding time that has to happen. There's a gap that has to happen in order for us to reach that new identity. And so many people give up before they reach their new identity. And so many times it's like right before they reach this new identity, they give up because it's fucking hard. Excuse my language. It's not that it's hard to understand or that the concepts are hard, but the psychology and grooming your psychology and, and the anchoring and the coding time and, and living in that gap is hard. When one door closes, another one opens, but it's hell in the hallway. And that's why it's important that you have decided to cut off all other options. That's why it's important that you have made the decision that the universe is not going to reject me in any way. There is no rejection. That is my core belief of the universe. There is no rejection. There's only feedback. And that this is course adjustment. It doesn't mean that I'm winning or losing. It just means it's course adjustment. And that's why it's critical that you have your core identity of exactly how you want to be showing up in this world and exactly the experiences you're having because now you're going to know if you're on course or off course. If you don't have it written down and don't know who this identity is, then how do you know where you're going? Right? And it's important that you understand that through these challenges is asking yourself the question, how do I persuade myself to keep in the game through the climate? Right? Living here in New York, we have four seasons. But within those seasons, we have many seasons. And we could have a nice day. We could have a rainy day. We could have a hurricane. We could have a beautiful still day. But every day, the climate changes. And your job is not to be wishy-washy, but to make that decisive decision of the identity that you're standing in. And, and how do you persuade yourself to keep going regardless of the climate? Do you need to bring an umbrella with you today? Do you need to hunker down in the house? Is it the day that you could go outside and feel the sun on your face? You're not making the climate mean something. You're just adjusting your course based on the climate. Do you see the difference? You're not getting stuck in this climate is good. This climate is bad. I like this climate. I don't like this climate. Sun means that I can have a good time and rain means I can have a bad time. You're not assigning any sort of meaning to the climate. You're just adjusting your course based upon the climate and you're going to use the right tools. 
And I guess it really boils down to commitment is, do you want the result or do you not want the result? Because if you want the results, you're gonna stay the course. And if you don't want the results, you're not gonna stay the course. And this is where you get to choose to say, where do I, when I'm in my challenge, how do I show up in my identity now? So let's say I'm in identity A, and this is where I'm operating from right now, but I have identity B that I have decided that I wanna be this person, right? I wanna be free of the ruminating thoughts, that I wanna show up and wake up in peace every day, that I have a, I'm earning an income of at least $150,000 a year, that I'm in a marriage that is compatible, that we're enjoying it, that my family, I'm able to go on vacations and see my grandchildren. Like this is the identity of who I'm choosing to be. But right now I'm not there. I'm not in a relationship. My job may be making less than that. And so there's, there's the gap. But now you get to ask yourself, okay, if I was going to be let's say confident, let's say the Donna I am now, and just for sake of um, example, confident Donna, what would confident Donna, how would she need to be? How would she need to show up in the world in order to be confident Donna? So maybe confident Donna is not gonna get stuck in the small things, and let's say I was on a date and the date didn't go well. And in the past, that may, I may have been ruminating about it. I may have brought in all of the stories. And the confident Donna, when she's in a relationship with someone who she loves, she's not going to be in that space. So I'm not going to make myself available for worrying about it. I'm just not going to make myself available for ruminating. It's just like a calendar. What are you making yourself available for? And then deciding this is all about decision stepping in this new identity deciding what am i not available for and what am i available for because one thing that i know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt is then when when people really want something they're going to find a way and you are no different so these challenges again the opportunities they've been given to you are only that they're small course adjustments along the way i'm not minimizing the feelings behind it because those small course adjustments to you or to me may feel like huge chasms of adjustments but we've decided that we're going for victory we've decided that there's no other option we've decided that this is the identity that we are stepping into. We've decided that you're available to step in that identity and you're not available for anything else. And it's the decision that you can handle the challenges. And then asking yourself the question, what has to happen for me in order to do that? What has to happen? Where do, I, where do I need to focus? What has to happen for me? How do I need to show up in order for me to get to point, from point A to point B? And with the core belief that everything good happens, for our, everything happens for our highest good, even in the suck. And when you hold the core belief that everything happens for us for our highest good, whether good or bad, however we feel about it. But if our core belief that everything eventually will see the reasons why we had to go through something, we may not understand it in the moment. I always like to say in the moment, it feels like it's an absolute mess. But looking back 10 years later, it's a perfectly orchestrated symphony that all the pieces, everything had to happen the way it did in order for you to get to where you needed to be. So your core belief, knowing that everything happens for our highest good, even in the suck. So here's some questions you could ask yourself during this time of challenge to keep you moving towards this identity that you have deemed that, you, that you're ready to step into is what muscle are we being called to use? Instead of looking at the challenges, I, it's horrible, this is awful, what, what am I being called, what muscle am I being called to use? How can this challenge right now be the best thing for my future? What is it that I'm, I'm not seeing? What, what is it here in this moment that I'm not seeing? What could be great about this challenge? What's the gift in this challenge? 
how is this an opportunity for my growth or expansion? How is this for my highest good? And if nothing else, my go-to question, if I can't see it, if I'm too blocked, and I just, I'm just not seeing it because the pain is so great, I could just ask myself the very simple question, what would love do in this moment? You know, there's a myth in society that says once we decide on something, and there, there, there should be an automatic flow. Now, you know that when we're in our grace and when we're in our abundance and we're operating at our highest level, that manifestation actually is effortless. It does come to us with ease, but that muscle takes time to build. And sometimes everything isn't automatic flow. And sometimes it's hard. And it's not always easy. And it's about how do I harness my power, not harness my blame and my guilt and my sorrow. Feeling challenged is okay. Suffering is not okay. And isn't it interesting when you're chasing your dream, when your heart is alive because there's hope and there's passion and there's purpose because you just know more than you know more than you know there's something inside of you, isn't that when we're most alive? Isn't that when we show up and there's just this energy, this light, this glistening of our spirit and our soul and our body because we're most alive. We're not tied to someone else's dream or the problems or the struggle, that there's hope. And that's what I would ask you to do today is, is step into an identity and pick an identity that inspires you to wake up. And when I say wake up, I mean wake up that spirit and that soul inside of you. And someday isn't on the calendar. Now is on the calendar. Today, July 29th, 1226 Eastern Standard Time, now is on the calendar. Don't wait for someday, because someday isn't on the calendar and someday never comes. It's making the decision now. It's making the decision to cut off any other option. It's understanding and stepping into the anchoring and the core belief system that the universe is for us, never against us. That we can have fun, that we are giving purpose to our challenges. Our challenges aren't here to take us down. They're here to lift us up and making the choice to groom our psychology and groom our thinking and vacuum out the dirt and get the help to vacuum out the dirt. We can't do it alone. And the more we do it, the easier it becomes. And then becoming responsible and accountable for our actions and also becoming aware of where we're assigning our feelings during the, the challenging times. Are we assigning the feelings to guilt, to our capacity to receive? Do we have capacity issues? Are we assigning them to life is hard, life is bad, this is tough, nothing works out for me? Are we assigning it to, I don't really, I think other people could have this, but I really don't know about me. That's not the identity that you're stepping into. The identity of someone that you're stepping into would say, I'm going to assign this to, yes, this is a challenge, but I, I have the tools and I'm going to make it through. That I deserve to be loved. I deserve to give love. I deserve to step into the highest version of myself. I deserve to step into the arena and live. And guess what? When you step into the arena and live, you're going to get hit. It's a ring. It's like a boxing ring. Anytime you step up to the new level and version of yourself, you are going to get punched, guys. But that punch, be careful of what you make it mean. And it's asking yourself, what result do I really want? And what am I available for? And what am I not available for? Like for me, I'm just not available for worry. I'm not available for getting stuck on the, the, the little things. I'm not, and I will not tolerate toxic thinking. I am available for expansive thinking. I am available for challenges and figuring it out along the way. I am available to show up to the next level of myself. I am available 
to connect with other like-minded people who are going in the same path. You have one option, and that option is victory. And there's a cost to not choosing that option. And if you choose that option and you need to stay there for a little while, again, that's your choice, but understand that there's a cost. If you can't, if you feel you can't handle the next level of your identity, you won't. So don't take too big of a step. Take just about the biggest step you can take in order for you to be able to handle it and receive it and step into it. And what has to happen for you to go in that direction? So with that said, I hope today's training was awesome and amazing. I can tell you right now, I am completely fired up. <laughs> so I hope you are too. And I hope this gives you something to think about. And I will catch you guys on the other side. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.